Okay, we're using a virtual machine running on VirtualBox. It's an Ubuntu machine, uh, 16.04. And what we've got is uh, a terminal open, so I can have a look to see what we've got here in terms of uh, Mininet installation. So let's go and have a look and see if there's anything on here. So sudo, uh, we're going to have a look in the apt list for installed pop that through grep with a little bit of mini net at the end. We're also going to have a look and see, so Ray, nothing there, and let's go and have a look and see if there's anything there for Wireshark as well. Nothing there. Right, okay, good. So, um, command, I'm just going to pipe, type this, uh, copy this in. This is just a absolute sort of check C to make sure that we've got everything. All it's doing here is it's going looking for sort of notorious locations for Mininet. It's taking those away. If we have a look, there's no local Mininet, there's no open flow. That's good, otherwise we'd remove those as well. Um, hmm. Okay, well I think we should be okay. So let's have a look. What we're going to do is we're going to get this from uh, GitHub. So we're going to we're going to clone this across. So let's do a, a git clone. We're in our home directory, judging by uh, the prompt. So we're looking at git. Uh, it's GitHub, and it's Mininet. So we're looking for two lots of Mininet. I'm sure there's too many I's and, and M's in there. Uh, let's have a look. So oh yes, there we go straight away right at the top is we're almost there we can't spy and get hmm. ah that looks okay so let's have a look see if we've got anything here yes we have we've got a mini net folder in here so the next thing that we need to do is via mini net and let's have a look let's bring that up mini net and then we're going to go through util and we're going to go into install shell. We're going to use the minus A for all. You can put a minus H there for help. See what you can do. Uh, have a look. See if that flashes past. It doesn't take very long uh, to do all of this. Oh, see some stuff coming in for open flow. There's a controller there. Lots of fizzing and bangs, a few warnings along the way, don't worry about those. Warnings are not bad, it just means it hasn't built what it needs yet. That might come later, in which case the warning will disappear as the build progresses. So yeah, a few warnings, but uh, on the whole we're looking good. Yeah, I can see some Wireshark stuff going through there. That's very good. Yeah, some more Wireshark going in here. So that looks very good indeed. Uh, in fact, if we were to uh, repeat, let's have a look just as a, as a moment of interest. In fact, if we go back up and look for what's in, in there in Wireshark, there we go. We've got Wireshark installed. Uh, be interesting to see what it thinks about Mininet. Mm -hmm. But it's here, look. Well, it is. Uh, and we've done the installation of it so if if that's good to go then we should be able to do a quick test so we can uh, effectively do um, um, a, a very quick test as far as we're concerned which is essentially to set it up so that it does a, a ping or, or we could just go and do a quick simple topology there we have um, and also hopefully uh, Wireshark is running in here as well so we'll see if that can uh, fire up. See what interfaces it knows about. Ignore that, you didn't see that. So looking across the interface, I'm particularly interested in this loopback interface. And, and I'm particularly interested to see if there's any open flow. Yep, I can see open flow messages going backwards and forwards on the loopback interface. So I should at least see some echo messages, which is basically keep alive. And then if I prompt it, poke it a little bit with a stick. So if I go back and I do a H1 ping H2, then what I should see is we should see some more stuff going on in here. Uh, again, a lot of echo requests, echo replies. I'm particularly interested to see if I can see any packet ins and packet outs. 
So here we go, it's a pings. Let's have a look and see what we've got here now coming through. Yep, we've got some uh, packet ins. That's packet ins from the switch to the controller and packet outs from the controller. Flow mods also from the controller. So even though we're, we're armed with just a single IP address here, uh, which you can't get the sense of direction, knowing OpenFlow, knowing the specification for OpenFlow, we know which way round these messages are going. So now we've got something something we can have a look at. Um, now if we have a look at uh, DP kettle and dump flows we should have some flows in there now these are interesting because we can go back and look at these and they will that there'll be two flows there one out one back for ARP and there'll be a flow one out one back for ICMP as I guess I can certainly see some ARP stuff in here and I can see some ICMP yep there and there look okay so uh, maybe something more in the way of ARP but that would just reflect what's actually been happening and who's been trying to make the data transfers and they get reflected here in uh, ports in and ports out so you'll see an input on the one side married up to an output on the other um, so look at those and uh, explore those within your own test lab and all should be hunky-dory so all we needed to do is put in Minute. Now, there's a few things we can do in Minute. One of the quite useful ones is whatever you want to do say, as a command, you could do it from H1 and you could do an IF config from there. And that will actually, that's the actual IP address of that host compared to uh, host 2's IF config, which is 10.0.0.2. So those are the two IP addresses are actually pinging when one pings the other. So H1 ping. Uh, and this time we're going to do the minus C option or two, so to limit the number of pings to H2. So we've got two pings going through. Uh, and then what we would actually see on the trace, uh, assuming the trace came all the way down. In fact, uh, wrong interface, loopback is where we're at, so we'll have to go and find another lot. But what we'd actually find is that it's using the IP address is 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.2. Okay, so if we come back out of here, uh, and if we have a look at the options that we've got available to us, the interfaces that we're actually particularly interested in are these two. S1 Ethernet 1 and S1 Ethernet 2. Switch 1, 2 ports. We can see that if we look at the nodes. That's the list of nodes that are there. If we then have a look at net, we can see the connection. We've got the controller, we've got two hosts and we've got a switch. We can see that host 1 Ethernet 0 is connected to switch 1 Ethernet 1. Host 2 Ethernet 0 is connected to switch 1 Ethernet 2. And then we can see the switch connections going back through to those hosts. So that is the topology. That's, that's effectively what we've got for our money. Um, and that looks a little bit like this. So we can see that we've got our hosts, we've got our switch, and we've got our controller in the overall configuration. And it's very simple topologies reflected in the net statement that we can see within Mininet. Okay, so um, as we say, one of the things we could do is we could actually run commands off of the hosts. So let's run an xterm command, and we'll run it in the background. So we can see that, that actually pulls up an xterm for us to work with. And if we do IF config this time, of course, its IP address will be 10.0.0.1, as this indeed is that particular host. So we can actually ping from here with 10.0.0.2, and we can see those replies are coming back. Okay, so just exit out of there. Right, be careful you don't double bounce that one, otherwise it drops the screen as well. And you can see we're okay, we can carry on firing away with other commands. We could pull up H2, that could have an external, why not? It might be feeling left out. Uh, and again, that again will allow us to run commands off of there, not least your basic networking commands. Okay, so that allows us to do a little bit of test traffic around there. There are other routings that we can do, uh, which, are, which are more sophisticated, and we can build much more sophisticated topologies. Um, um, we could do them at the command line, but more likely to actually use customized files to do that. Let me just exit out of that, and a good thing to do is a sudo mn minus c which is a cleanup operation you do that every time you come out now if I have a look around what we can see is we've uh, we're, we're, we're running here in sort of if we check where we are we're running here in ray if we drop down into mininet 
we can have a look around in here. There's two areas I'm particularly interested in. One is called custom. So if we have a look in custom for a moment, and we can see in here there's only one topo in there. That's the default sort of topo. Uh, and, and that's a more sophisticated setup because what we can see inside there, if we were to cat that, is we would actually see that this builds a topology up for us. So we, what we can do here, we can actually see as we come down through, it's a, it's a simple topo as it calls it, and you can see it's building in, it's calling the hosts and switches host one and a host two, giving them left host and right host, uh, switch three and switch four here. Uh, so switches being added and then the connectivity between those. So we'll have a little bit of a play with one of these um, um, files of our own making, of our own topology, a little bit later on. So another area of interest is rather than go down to custom, we could go down to examples. And we'll find a similar sort of set of things going on here. Notice the .py ending, these are Python. So they'll have to effectively be run under Python. And what we can do is something similar to what we saw before. Um, let's have a look at uh, controllers2.py. So let's do a cat on controllers2.py. And what we can see here is, is on a similar line. So we can see uh, there's, there's usually a, a, a topper here in terms of text. That's just telling us what this is. Then we can start to see here, this is starting to build this up. So this is doing the imports so that we can build up from those standard sort of classes libraries within Mininet. And then we can start to build up. We've got a, a multi-controller environment here. There's two controllers listed down here. Look, yeah, I want us to come back and have a look at the configuration of here. There's the two controllers. You can see that one of those controllers is told to listen on port 6633, whilst the other one is using port number 6634. Uh, especially if you're running them on the same uh, local host, you're going to have to do that. Uh, then we've got to, to two switches, switch one and switch two, and we've got hosts. Now notice the hosts here have actually got uh, addressing. So we've got host one and host host two. Uh, and we've also got, so this is uh, effectively building them up as part of a, of, of a subnet or subnets. Then what we can see down here is the links are being established between the switches and their hosts. And we could also see the controllers and the controllers as are associated with their switches. So this is telling a switch to start and then go and find its controller. So the topology here is looking like we've got a link between the um, switch one and the host, switch two and its host, and switch one to switch two. So that looks like a sort of classic, so almost linear connection in terms of a topology. And indeed it is. So that's the sort of thing that will actually be built as a result of that. You can do some of this by command line. There are certain uh, options you can do, but we'll, again, we'll come back and have a look at those uh, at another time. So that was getting Mininet onto our Ubuntu and a few commands to have a look around, uh, as well as ensuring that Wireshark was up and running. So it's a case of fill your boots with all of this good stuff.